Hi everybody. Well, today we're down here and um, I am down here without the horses and there is a reason for it. It's we fun. are at Paul Smith's College again where I've been logging and uh, we were using my sled that we just got fixed up that I've shown you on a couple videos now. And yesterday I had a good day. Actually the last few days I think I've worked three days now with this sled and I've hauled up quite a few loads of logs from my big pile I had down in the woods and I think the trucker came in the other day he took three loads out of here and there's a load and a half here probably now so anyways we've moved quite a lot of stuff and I told you that I was having a little bit of issue with this sled when I'm loading it with the excavator because the logs would roll to the edge of the sled and actually tip it over well I knew that was going to cause me trouble and sure enough yesterday I was on my very last log and it was a big one and what happened is the log rolled on this front bunk and literally pulled it right up out of here and the whole bunk came right out of there. Uh, I'm not going to pull apart now because I got it somewhat together but it busted this whole piece out. This is this this here went down through down through the wood and this came right off because this whole piece busted. You know, it really tore it apart. And as you can see, the wood is old and ripe as can be. Now I knew this was potentially going to happen, but I was hoping I might be able to get through the winter with it. Um, I also wasn't at all surprised that we could. So if, if it wasn't for the fact that these logs are so huge, it would have gone fine throughout the whole winter, but it was just the loading process is what um, really gave me troubles. And so I have no choice but to call it quits with this sled for this winter. And uh, I talked to the Amish guy that did the first part of the rebuild, and he is going to sometime over the course of the next six months, um, replace all the wood on the whole sled so it will be a whole new sled and that's great but I won't be able to finish up the winter with this year so I had several options I can go back to use my dray which is over there I could just skid these logs up the hill but I decided what I'm going to do I decided to bring my scoot up here now this scoop is also, well, let's get it out of here and uh, so you can see it so much better in the sunlight and I'll explain a few things with it. We had enough trouble getting the each individual set of double sleds out of here. There's no way Brenda and I are going to pull this thing out of here by hand. So I'll get the skid steer started up and we'll get it dragged out. Are you glad you used the sled though and brought it down here I am, so you could I see? I am very it? glad, even though I only got three days of skidding out of it um, I, I found out what I need to find out and uh, there's the majority of the things I really like about it but there are still are some issues with the double sled that I did not like mostly the fact that it, it flips over way too easy and my my big sled my scoot is not going to be will not flip over I'm sure um, and I'll explain some of those things as we go along maybe not even right now but as we come up back in here another day with the horses um, I can explain some of those things. Thank you. 
So I'll explain a few things here. Um, I'm putting my stakes back in on my front bunk right here. Uh, I can only go down a little ways and the, the nut that holds this bunk on comes right up through the center right here. So we need to have a, a pipe so that it will go around that bolt to work. Um, this chain I gotta take off. This is the one I, when I put it on, I just put it between the two bunks and lifted it right up the skid steer and kind of slid it in the, tra in the trailer. So anyways, um, last year or two years ago now, my neighbor made up these I-beam bunks, which I really like because they're pretty well indestructible. And when you're dealing with um, excavators and or skid steers loading logs, you tend to um, lose them once in a while and they drop and they hit on these bunks really hard. And so they need to be very strong. So that works out really good. I also, I did a bunch of modifying the last couple of years with this sled. And uh, I, um, my, as you can see, the difference between these bunks and the bunks of my other sled are these bunks stop right here at the edge of the sled, at the runners, I mean. So there's no overhang for it to, uh, to allow it to flip over. Also, these runners are a lot, lot heavier than the other sled and they're wider apart. So, the, you know, I, I don't think it's possible even to hardly flip this over, even with these big logs. Now in the back here, um, these are made a little bit differently. Um, we ended up with a, um, we just got the bolts that come up through. We, we drilled it through a plate here that holds these back, this back bunk on. And there's nothing down in here except for dirt. And there's a pipe down in here. So it's gonna be very easy for me to just take two small stakes to stick in there. I don't need long stakes like those front ones, but that's just what I happen to have to go through those, those bunks and that's gonna work fine. Um, I will quite often take them out while I'm loading and unloading, but these will just have short bunks on them. So when I get down there and get loaded up, this chain here is hitched right to the, to the runner and that can just drag. On this side here, there's another chain underneath the runner right at the moment. And this too can just drag, but I can't get out of there, but that's okay. So when I get loaded up, I can throw this chain over the top and grab my binder and bind it together to hold the, the load on. Um, let me get the short tongue that I have for this sled. So this is the tongue that I use on this sled if I'm using my cart which is what I'm going to be doing. With this scoot, I also have a long tongue, and you've seen this quite often being used when I'm using horses at home. And I have a two by six bed on the, on the floor. So this has just a notched out piece to go into this ring right here. And we don't actually pull off of the tongue. I'll show you in a minute. So in this tongue, there is a hole. And I brought two different size bolts. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna use. And so it's just a matter of sliding the bolt through there and that will stop the tongue from falling out. I'll have to get a wrench to take that up. But that's the way that's held together. And then up here, there's this chain. And this is what we pull from. It's pulling right here and it's coming off each runner. So as it pulls, each of the runners are being pulled. And as you probably noticed when I was pushing that around, this, this sled has the ability to, to slide back and forth, to, to shift. And so that's to allow it a little bit to go around corners and to go around, you know, if, when you hit a stump or something, it kind of works around them like that. So this will be hitched to my cart and this will be hitched to my cart also. Um, so let me explain what's going on with this sled. Um, I actually have sitting on my sawmill, even now, two 
brand new ash runners that I will be using to make new runners for this sled. They need to be replaced at some point soon. This tongue here also needs to be replaced, but there's very little stress on this tongue as long as I make my turnaround plenty big enough so it's not binding a lot. When I'm pulling, you're actually pulling off the chains, not the tongue. The tongue is only to be used when you're going downhill or when you want to stop. And we don't have downhill, we have uphill here. But last winter, I broke the front of this runner, not completely, but I had a bad bag crack in it. I don't know if that's it or if it's even down lower, it doesn't really matter. Um, but I took two ash two by sixes and bolted that together with these nice large bolts. And it's still okay. It's still usable. Now I realize, and I'm going to regret it if the first day out I break my runner or break that. If I break that tongue, I can just pull that tongue out and, and go home and replace that. That's not a big deal. But if I break these runners, I got to take the whole sled home and redo it. Now my plan is to redo it. Like I said, the, the runners are laying right on the sawmill even as we speak. Um, but it's, it's a bit of a job to make the runners and uh, bolt it all together and all that good stuff. So I'm hoping that I might be able to get through the winter, rest of the winter with this. Mud season could be two, three weeks away and we're all done. So I want to be able to keep going as long as I can uh, right now. And I think it'll be okay because it's still quite solid. Um, and while we're on this, when you were unloading, and I'm sure everybody saw it, saw it, but the, this, is this called the shoe? The shoe, the runner shoe, yes. It is not, it's like Flopper. separate from the runner. Flopper. Yes, the, the last bolt to hold this shoe on is probably somewhere around here, and the back bolt did get broken off months and months and months ago. I think even way back last winter, it was just flopping like that. Um, it really is not a big deal. You're just going straight ahead, so it's just following the sled, and it's fine. As you see on this sled over here, this um, had a turn like this on my original one, and that broke off also, but the runner shoe actually does come right to the end of the runner. It's no big deal. That's not a problem. Um, so let's get the cart hitched onto this. I'm sure there's a lot of things I was going to tell you and I forgot. But as we start working with it, I can even do some other videos on it and explain some more about what's going on with our situation here. You guys want to take a guess on how many days he and the horses are going to use this before he breaks it? The sled was three days. Let's see how long this is. I guess I'm not going to hitch it up today. My sled is... This is another thing I do. Um, maybe some of you guys have had issues with this too. When you have a cart, especially a heavy cart, like my logging cart, it's heavy on the tongue. If you just leave it sit there for long periods of time and you have a fresh piece of wood in there, it'll actually bend it. So I, I like to put a block underneath there and it helps it from bending quite so fast. So because of that, I'm not gonna bother even getting hitched up to it, but it's just a matter of hitching up, dropping the pin and taking a short chain from that ring up to my car. But next time we're here, I'm gonna show you that. Good morning, everybody. This is uh, the next day, and so we are trying out our new scoot. And I loaded it up, that big log there on the left is the one I broke my other sled with. And uh, we threw that on these two grubby logs on this side here. It's actually four logs, I think it's gonna be cut in half. But anyways, um, we are heading up the hill right now. And this seems to be pulling really nice. We'll talk more about how it works and the way it works as we make these videos.
when I pulled in here this morning, I checked my thermometer in my truck. And it said 44 degrees. And, uh, you know, normally I would have thought, my goodness, I won't be a log today. But this cold, this warm, I mean, I knew I knew it was supposed to be this warm, but there's something about this uh, this area up here. It's, like I said, it's 44 degrees and everything's still frozen just fine. And uh, it's supposed to actually get to 50 today, which is extremely warm for winter time, of course. But I don't think it's going to stop me from logging, which is so good. The trail is still very hard. Part of that reason is because I've been using it quite a bit and I've got it packed down really nice. And so it's allowed the frost to go a little bit deeper. And uh, yeah, we are having no problems at all this morning. One thing that's kind of interesting is as I was using the other sled, the runners are actually quite a bit narrower than this sled here. And the wheels of the cart are kind of going along where the horse's tracks are, more or less. And so with their shoes and all, they're actually making it makes it a little bit rough riding on the cart. Um, whereas if it was just a sled and I didn't have the cart, I'd have a really smooth ride. But with this sled here, as you can see, with four inch runners, and the runners are spread out considerably more, they're kind of tracking approximately where my tires are. And so I'm actually gonna have, after a little bit of time, gonna have actually a smoother ride riding on this cart. Um, this sled will not track or follow me as well as the other sled did, but uh, I have such a good road through here that it really doesn't matter. Oh. And I think it's gonna go just fine with this sled. My, my only concern is the ability to keep this sled in one piece so I can finish up this job before mud season. Now, as far as mud season for you, people that aren't loggers or you know understand logging or even understand the north countries where there's snow um, we have a stretch of weather what we call mud season and it's when all the snow starts to melt it, everything turns to mud and the roads are too soft to be able to go on and it's just a tough time of year for people like myself that are loggers um, because we just can't operate but uh, we still have a few more weeks before that happens I cast out. But so far, I'm very pleased with how this sled is working. I would say I probably have four or five hundred feet on this load, which is an acceptable load as far as I'm concerned. One thing I do have to be careful of is my bunks are only like four feet wide, whereas my other sled were five feet wide. So some of these big logs, I'm not gonna be able to get two logs even sitting on the floor of the sled. So there's gonna be times I'm just gonna run one log up the hill and be done with it. This particular time I had these two smaller logs and trees type of thing on the, so I was able to slide them beside that big log. There's one other thing I want to show you when we get to the landing about this, this sled, which is good and bad both, I guess you could say. I think it's going to be another bright sunny day. It's just incredible weather to be logging being out in the woods and enjoying the woods. Oh, okay, I want to show you a couple things on this sled that are considerably different than the other sled. So, when I want to come to landing and for some reason my skid steer won't start, I am not gonna be able to unload this sled by hand. The way my bunks are made, we have steel uprights here that we drop the stakes in, the back stakes, so with front stakes too, and they are above the bunks. So it's gonna be 
almost impossible for me to roll logs over that steel stake. On this side here, when I was loading up, I have a stake that goes in here, but this log was actually tight against here and I couldn't even get my stake in. But another one thing about this is really nice. I don't have to put my stake in because there's already a stake there that's kind of permanent. But there again, it's permanent, but it doesn't allow me to unload by hand. So if my skid steer doesn't start up someday, I'm just gonna have to unhitch the sled right in place here and just cut and skid logs down below and wait for a warmer day so I can get my skid steer started. But most of the time it does start, that's good. So we'll get this loaded up and I think that's all I wanted to show you on this sled, but I did want to show you um, how it turns. So we'll go down and turn around in the exact same spot that I was turning my double sleds in and to show you that it really isn't that bad. It turns pretty good there. Okay, so we're back down in our landing when the logs, as you can see, are all gone. And we're moving on to another spot. But I want to show you how this scoot works. So um, I got my stake that I took out before and it's kind of a smaller hole. So I actually had to pretty well taper that down pretty good for this to fit. But it does, fits good. And uh, so the way this scoot works, it is set up to be able to kind of, I guess you could say scoot back and forth. <laughs> so the way this is set up with chains on both of the runners, it allows this, and, and the bunks are on, on pins. So it allows this, I don't know if I can, but allows this to pivot back and forth. So one, one runner, can slide a slight a little bit individually by itself. I'm gonna set my camera up so maybe you can see it better. So the runner will actually slide individually by itself back and forth. And of course each of them will. So it's a little bit sloppy and that's the way you want it here. Um, okay. So because of that it allows it to go around corners a little bit better when you turn into the left this right hand runner will actually slide ahead a little bit of the left hand runner. So we're gonna go up here to where we have the exact same turnaround that we had with the other sled. And the horses are used to turning around here. And I came in with my first, first time already. And it was no problem at all. And I'm gonna set the camera up, I guess over here on this stump and you can see how easy it turns. Really? Yeah. Ah. 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 Oh. So what you have to watch here, just like on my other sled, that this tire doesn't hit the tongue of the scoot. Cut that. Oh. So there you have it. It's going well. And I hope you enjoyed being able to see the differences between the two sleds that we're working this winter. I'm gonna to get to log in and you guys have a great rest of the day.
Thank you. 